Sex doesn't start with you just getting into bed with your partner or with yourself. When I learned about it, when I experienced the yoni massage and when I also learned linga massage, I thought I was having amazing sex. But when I experienced that, I realized that I was having sex wrong my entire adult life. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of this podcast. My name is Britt Moran, your host. And as you know, we're all about raising consciousness. That means having mindful conversations so that you can prove your health, wealth, happiness, and lifestyle. Now, before I introduce this amazing guest, which I'm really excited to talk to today, I just want to let you know that we've had a massive upgrade in our podcast studio We've actually got straws for the coconuts. It's actually gone all over my leg. <laughs> Finally, I got some straws for the coconuts. So now my guests can feel a bit more comfortable and just start sipping their coconuts out of a straw. Before that, we was like jungle style, just ripping open a coconut, just drinking them from the thing. So Viv, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for your time. Viv is a mindful intimacy coach. And she just said, I just said, how do you want me to introduce you? And she said, I'm a mindful intimacy coach in the bedroom. So I'm obviously going to go straight into that topic. What does that actually mean, Viv? And yeah, welcome. Yeah, thank you. I love the setup. Thank you for thinking about me with the straws. Yeah. A mindful... You look like a... I know you a little bit. And I was like, she's a straw kind of girl. Uh, yeah. Do have a straw? Definitely. And sustainable. Sustainable straw. Yes. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Thank you. And thank you for the introduction. I love your studio. And well, to answer your question, a mindful intimacy coach is really about taking away the conventional aspect of intimacy and sex and making it more conscious, more sacred, mm -hmm. more connected to either with yourself or with a partner. You don't have to have to have a partner for intimacy to happen. So, yeah. So it's not just about sex in the bedroom. It's about mindfulness and intimacy over with yourself. Mm -hmm. Becoming more conscious and aware of yourself and mm -hmm. pleasure. So, yeah, just tell me more. Let's get straight into it. Okay. I'll keep my clothes on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Before we started recording, I, was, I told you, I was like, I'm a mindful intimacy coach in the bedroom and I'm also a mindfulness coach in the workplace. And you said, I said the word work. <laughs> work. Beep. <laughs> beep. Uh, so, the way it really started was that through the workplace, I'm part based in Hong Kong, part based in Thailand. And in Hong Kong, people really worry about the productivity and the efficiency and the stress levels and whether or not they can produce more. And I realized that a lot of people were talking about the stress at work, but nobody was talking about the stress at home that they can bring to work. So if you just address the stress and the nervous system health when you're at work and you're not addressing what's happening at home and your relationships at home, but you want to have better team building activities and relationships with your colleagues, it's not going to work. So I started to focus on the mindful intimacy part. And I actually came to Koh Penyang a number of years ago and I learned from a Tantra coach here on how to facilitate yoni and linga massage sessions. Okay, so for people at home... <laughs> I've got so many questions already. Yeah, yeah. What's a yoni and a lingam? Yeah, so you came to my talk and yes. you were a very, very good participant. A yoni and a lingam, they're Sanskrit words. Sanskrit, the language of yoga. And yoni means, means the divine symbol of female sexual pleasure and power. Okay. And lingam is the male version. So the vagina and the penis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. essentially. But more than just the genitals and the reproductive system, it is your essence. It is. I love that. Where life happens, it is the origin, the source. So it is much more grand and sacred than us just thinking about, oh, penis and vagina. Mm. And because when we say vagina, actually, it only encompasses a small part of the female genitals, which is just the inside. Yeah. And you know from my talk that- I learned so much. So much. Actually, I learned that I didn't know so much. I <laughs> yeah. learned so much that a lot of the very important real estate of pleasure <laughs> is on the outside, which is the vulva. So there's no one word in the English language that actually describes the female genitals and our sexuality in an empowering way. Mm. I know in many parts of the world we're we as in as a collective of women and men trying to reclaim the word pussy as a non-derogatory term. 
But I really like the word yoni because it's it's more than just the genitals. Yoni verse. Well. Yeah, yoni verse. Yeah, look at you. So beautiful, right? Ooh, a plus <laughs> plus. So we've got lots of questions, but let me just come back to what I really liked when you said about mindfulness in like the workspace. I know I said that word, mm-hmm. and then mindfulness in the bedroom. Because for anybody listening that's kind of new to meditation or mindfulness, mm. like mindfulness can apply to eating. Mm-hmm. It can apply to parenting. It can apply, like you say, to sex in a bedroom or making love, I rather would say. Um, it, mindfulness is for everything. And I think when we slow down and we become more present and aware, or even just now being in the mm-hmm. podcast, being in the present moment with you, mm-hmm. not feeling nervous and about my next question, mm-hmm. to really become more mindful of the present moment adds so much more zest to life. Mm-hmm. So for me, like, Doing that when you're in the bedroom, it's like, mm. wow, you're going to have a great night or a great moment, you know? Yeah. So mindfulness intimacy isn't like just for the bedroom, but obviously you're a specialist in mm. relationships, which is so, I think, so needed in the world. But mindfulness is a, a whole topic in any area of our lives. Would you agree? Absolutely. Absolutely. You can apply it to, like you said, mindful eating, mindful walking, mindful conversations, mindful listening. Mm. That's a big one. I find that a lot of people don't know how to listen properly and we tend to react instead of respond. And we don't listen to understand. Mm. <laughs> right? you know, I'm, I'm nodding because I'm writing a book on meditation. <laughs> and one of the big things I put in there is one of my peeves is when I'm out with friends and I ask them a question or we're talking and they're just constantly you know, actually I'm mindful now of the conversations that I have. They mm-hmm. just don't listen. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, what's the point of actually me being here sometimes? Or they're on their phone or you're having, having a meal. Yeah. And I know it's uh, me being pretty sensitive, but I'm also like my time and my life is precious. So I don't want to just waste it if people are not so actively listening. So mm-hmm. I love that you've said that because I've put it in the book and I'm like, no, that should stay in the book to help uh-huh. people listen to their friends more, listen to their children more, listen to their parents more. Because when you do, you get to hear what people are really saying, right? Exactly. And in my TEDx talk I did a couple of years ago called The Sex Organs That Nobody Talks About, one organ is the, are the ears. The ears is really part of... How is it a sex organ? Because it's about listening, right? Sex doesn't start with you just getting into bed yeah. with your partner or with yourself. It's about communicating. It's about listening mindfully. So brain and ears are the two sex organs. That's a spoiler alert for my TEDx talk. But the mindful relating and the mindful communication, that's a key part before you head into the bedroom because foreplay starts at the end of your last orgasm. Mm. So foreplay doesn't start five, 10 minutes before the actual penetrative sex happens. Foreplay is all the time. It's showing that your partner, showing to your partner that you care and that you're listening, that you're being attentive, you're being sensitive to their needs because they might have said something a few days ago and you're like, oh, I remember that they wanted straws, metal straws for their coconut. So let me... (laughs) (laughs) So so it's, it's those things, those moments where you realize, oh, my partner is being mindful. My partner is listening to me. Wow, I feel loved. I feel cared for. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if it's uh, one of my core values, but in a relationship, that is probably one of the biggest things for me is to really, like you say, is somebody remembers something that you said last week. Mm. And I'm like, wow, they really listened. Mm-hmm. They really heard everything, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a really important part in the work that I do. When I said I facilitate yoni and linga massage workshops, people often think, oh, it's, so it's like a spiritual hand job. Mm. Yes. <laughs> remember? Yeah, remember? Was brilliant. Yeah. However, it could be, but in my sessions in particular, it's not that at all. We always start with mindful communication. We always start with talking because communication equals lubrication. <laughs> communication <laughs> equals lubrication. <laughs> yes. Mindful communication yeah. equals lubrication. So... With orgasm, for example, orgasm starts in the brain. It's a brain event. It doesn't actually require touching of the body. Yeah. So if you don't start to stimulate the brain before you start to stimulate the body, right, you're not going to feel aroused for a lot of us, especially women. It takes women for our erectile tissues in the yoni, for example, to erect, takes about 40 minutes on average for zero. And men? And men for 40 seconds, 40 seconds <laughs> to, to climax about two to seven minutes for men, two to 10 minutes. That's twice. Sorry. Average. 
Yeah. Just making sure I've got my. Like, wait, what? Uh Okay. Yeah. And so when, if you're trying to be on the same wavelength and the same time frame with your partner, you got to work with your bodies. You got to get to know your body. So aside from the communication part, then you have to learn about anatomy, Mm. right? We did a lot of anatomy uh, drawings and diagrams in my workshops just to get you to understand your body more because nobody teaches us in sex ed class your, your genitals or about where your clitoris is or where your G spot or your U spot or your A spot. Yeah. All the different erogenous zones. Yeah. Yeah. Why, why do you, why are you so passionate about this? Cause I can really feel it. And this is what I love about people, mm. their passions and their enthusiasms. What, how on earth do you kind of get into this and why are you so passionate about it? Cause at that workshop, yeah. there was what, maybe 20, 30 people or something at the workshop. Yeah. And, and I love that when I meet another teacher or whatever you want to call yourself, you know, mm. um, uh, a leader and, and, and you're spreading the message. You've learned something. Mm. You think, wow, this is incredible. I want to share it with the world. Um, mm. and so, but, but why? So why the why right yeah. simon sinek the why i do this is because when i learned about it when i experienced the yoni massage and when i also learned lingam massage i was 30 and i thought i was having amazing sex intimacy i had no problems getting to orgasm but when i experienced that i realized that i was having sex wrong my entire adult life cuz you don't know what you don't know And it was completely life-changing. It completely just made me feel like there is so much more that we need to learn about our bodies and our minds and about our partners. So I started talking about it to my girlfriends after attending this workshop. And they're like, what? What's a yoni? What are you talking about? You know, what? What? Seven different types of female orgasms? What? Like all these different information that I was putting out and talking about. Everyone was clueless, but everyone wanted to know more about it. They were very intrigued. Mm. So I knew that there was a need because we were so clueless. And also, if you look at a lot of long-term relationships, there's a lot of sexless marriages and sexless relationships out there. Or there, there are, there is sex happening, but the female might not be satisfied. And when I talk about intimacy and sex with a lot of my girlfriends and now with a lot of my clients, there is always a common theme. So usually the female, she thought she knew what she liked and she would pretend she would enjoy sex. And a lot of times to kind of get it over with or to please her partner, because a lot of women are natural people pleasers, they would have a mercy orgasm. And then in the men's perspective... Mercy, like a tap out. Tap yeah, out, yeah. dumb. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like a tap out. And then for the men that I'm speaking to, they think that they're, they're having great sex because the women aren't actually speaking up for their needs because they don't know. Yeah. They're, not, they're not conditioned to explore their bodies growing up. They're not condition to have a self-pleasure practice, masturbation and being sexual as a woman, especially growing up, especially in high school, you've been shamed, you've been slut shamed. You know, you, if you dress a certain way, there's just so much guilt and shame and embarrassment growing up. If you were being overly sexual, you become overly sexualized. And I'm, I'm speaking from a female perspective, right? But I hear a lot of men as well. They talk about their issues with sexuality, which is a whole different ball game as well not saying that men don't have these issues but if you really think about how society and cultures and religions have conditioned us our entire lives it's not to help us deepen our intimacy and this is why you're passionate about to help people go to deeper levels or higher levels higher levels deeper levels release emotions um in um, in many 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 of my sessions people cry Mm. Yeah. And you see and you feel the amount of pain that they've been in. So it's kind of like a rele- like a trauma release in some way. I don't want to label it, but it's like releasing mm-hmm. some kind of baggage or stuff that's been there and blocked for a long time. Which when you think about it, if two people come together and they've like they're not doing that, mm. like there is a massive disconnection, right? Yeah, then it is just wham bam, thank you, ma'am. Exactly. You know, and because bless them, they don't know that they've got all of this stuff that they've been holding on to for years, female or male. Yeah, exactly. And you said trauma, right? Mm. And a lot of people actually don't realize that they've had trauma. Mm. Trauma is beyond your capability to cope in that moment. 
That's all it is. Mm. But we sometimes signify trauma as rape, non-consensual abuse. sex, mm. abuse. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But trauma can be very minute to some people in comparison. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, so I think trauma is uh, is um, it's created by perception, isn't it? So mm -hmm. what what is massive to me could be tiny to you, mm -hmm. and then vice versa. It's how perception creates this trauma, and then the brain isn't against you. It just it's there to protect you. So it's like, mm -hmm. oh, let's protect ourselves, but. What I love is that you are helping people drop these layers and become vulnerable, whether it's with themselves mm. or whether it's with somebody else. Because, yeah, I can definitely think of a few times where I've not been myself and opened up to somebody and it's been more about performance mm -hmm. or getting to the end of a climax or satisfying somebody. Mm -hmm. And I look back now after I've been doing some of these workshops and come to my... I don't think I was having sex at all. Mm -hmm. I, I think I should go back to all these girls and say, look, should we try again? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> it, was, it was just literally the animal. It was more of an animal. Primal. Yeah, very primal. Mm. I think that kind of comes away from love. You said women can have seven orgasms a while ago. <laughs> you zoomed yeah. right back I'm, I'm in time. Hold the, on. Hold up a minute. <laughs> Not care about your why or other people. Tell me about these seven orgasms. You said yeah. something about women can have seven orgasms, but you kind of like carried on talking. So yes. What on earth for, for the average, I don't want to say it, but the average woman out there that has never looked at the yoni or the anatomy and now they might hear you say, what, seven orgasms? Mm -hmm. You know, some women obviously struggle to have one blessing because there's so much trauma. Yes. What on earth do you mean by seven orgasms? Because I'm actually yes. going to come to the men's uh, multi-orgasm in a moment. Yes. But what, is it, what does it mean to have seven orgasms? Seven different types oh. of female orgasms. But having said that, whether you go on Google and you search up all these different resources about the different types of orgasms females can have, it is literally a different number on every single website and every single resource because there has been so little research okay. about, these, about female pleasure. The clitoris was only discovered, the full anatomy of the, of the clitoris was only discovered in 1998. 1998? Yes, 1998. When you say discovered, what do you mean? The full anatomy. Yeah. So the clitoris... But on like online, because obviously the women knew that there was something there, right? Yeah, <laughs> but the actual anatomy of it, because it's not just the tip, it's, just not, it's not just what you see on the vulva. It's what's inside as well. Right? Yes, yeah. it stems down, looks like a wishbone. Did my homework. Yes, good job. So when you hear about the seven different types of female orgasms, it's really multiple, multiple different types of orgasms. You can have an eargasm. You can have a toegasm. You can have, you can have a headgasm. You know, people can feel orgasms in many different ways in many different scenarios. So when I say seven, it's the clitoral, the main ones, the clitoral, the cervical, the U spot, A spot, G spot, anal, and nipple are the common, common ones. And when you said, you know, some women might have never had an orgasm. And that is also very common because we tend to think that we can only orgasm through vaginal penetration. But I just named seven different types and, wow. and well, some of them do, but then so, so you have so many different possibilities mm -hmm. to experience being orgasmic, not just an orgasm. And I, I don't, like focusing on, okay, these are the orgasms because the, the possibilities are literally limitless. Mm. The more you discover, the more that you will be like, whoa, I can feel this. I am so present. I'm so mindful in these moments where I'm with my body or with my partner that I can feel so much more even beyond the seven different orgasms. Why do you think that, we, do you, why do you think that we just rush into it so quickly and get it over and done with, you know, and we... Because this sounds so beautiful, right? Mm -hmm. To be able to take time to connect, have these different orgasms. Yeah. And even as a man, as a man, and I'll share like where I'm at with it and I've got some questions about yeah. that stuff. But why do you think in general? Is it just because we've just never been taught about this? So we just, sex is sex and then that's it. Guys, I know you're enjoying the video, but I've got a quick question for you. Are you okay with that monkey mind <laughs> being a monkey? We've all got this voice inside the head, all voices, filled with self-doubt, criticism, judgment. But most people don't understand how important it is to master that monkey mind. So look, if you've got a monkey mind or a voice that is just busy inside your head and it never seems to shut up, I know exactly how you feel. And thankfully, I found meditation about 20 years ago. 
And so I have an amazing opportunity for you. It's the Bodhi Meditation Teacher Training Program. This 10 week program is designed to share with you eight Bodhi meditations. And the amazing thing about these meditations is that they are scientifically proven to help you reduce stress, reduce anxiety, uplift your mood, boost your energy. In other words, create that kind of lifestyle that energy and that health and that happiness that most people crave. Over the course of 10 weeks, I'm gonna be your meditation coach. And at the end of this course, you're gonna become a certified Bodhi meditation teacher. That means that you can coach people one-to-one, -one, you can work from anywhere in the world, build online courses, or even teach meditation at yoga retreats or anywhere you decide. So click that link below and together, will open up your heart so that you wake up feeling positive and literally this buzz for life. The link is below. Now you can get back to your video. Have an amazing day. Yeah, A, lack of education. B, porn. Yeah. Yeah, porn has been, I mean, if you think about, what is it, most people who, like the internet traffic, most of the internet traffic that's happening in the world is actually on porn sites. I don't have never looked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm like, oh, <laughs> what are you talking about? Um, so, is it porn? porn? Porn. We call it, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. porn. <laughs> yeah, but what? what? Um, so porn and conditioning about just m in movies, how we see movies, two people, they start making out and they go into the bedroom and then it's like in. Like, what? What? Where's the foreplay? Mm. Where, that was like that. I was like, her Yoni is not warmed up. <laughs> they did not even communicate. There was no lubrication. And there's there. not two or seven minutes in a film, is yeah. it? It's like 10 seconds. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So That's where I've been going wrong all my life. Exactly. So we've been conditioned to really reenact what we've seen. Mm which is so flawed. So in porn and in movies, no, nobody documents in films like a film and farting, right? Yeah. Or, or body hair or giggles or like someone toppling over the, falling over the bed or sweat or a little bit of urine. Like those are very, very normal things that happen. But we envision this perfect, you know, perfect body. And we, we, also think about how we look. We're so concerned about how we look naked mm. during intimacy. And so we have this very flawed vision of how sex should look like. Yeah. And, and do you think that's because like, you, you, I don't know about you, but when you look out to the world now with technology, which is fascinating in one, in one aspect, um, with the, the levels of conversation on podcasts and, and YouTube, do you think that the consciousness now is, is actually, people are becoming more aware of these conversations? I know you can go back into like uh, lots of yoga traditions and, and tantra traditions, mm. but it seems now because of technology, because of like podcasts and YouTube channels and, you know, uh, social media, we can actually now start talking about this and start raising these conversations. Whereas before, even like 30, 30 years ago, like mm. our parents probably weren't really talking about this stuff and having these open conversations but now we're like oh wow this is incredible like oh, I didn't know about this let me share this with other people yeah so in a way it's also kind of like a, a beautiful time to be in yeah because now we can start sharing this with people and, and, and raising these conversations say hey yeah you're having great sex it's amazing it's mm -hmm. 30 seconds a minute a couple of minutes <laughs> <laughs> yeah but you could you know you could have such a deeper connection with somebody that you truly love and it's not just about the wham bam thank you ma'am mm -hmm. so I find that fascinating we're in these opportunities where I can come to your workshop and learn so much more about the female anatomy which I was like whoa yeah yeah and I I like how you mentioned how it's just more accessible the information is more accessible we're welcoming the conversation more now but at the same time, we have to put theory into practice. So 10 years ago, I was also very into or very interested in the topic of Tantra and the female anatomy and all that. But it was at the mind level mm. for a while. So I like absorbing the information and the knowledge, but there was still some blockage where I was like, I didn't really feel like practicing it. There was no drive for me to practice it because I thought I was fine. You know, I'm learning, but it's staying here. Once I actually brought it to the somatic level, the body was feeling these practices and the results and after these rituals and these breath work and the sexual energy and channeling, all these things that I've learned, that was the game cha changer. Mm. So that 
was the game-changing factor of how a person would be able to transform. And I, and I think that even, I'm just thinking of, again, people that are at home, like, this sounds amazing, but I don't know any guys that would talk about this stuff. Or guys mm. are like, this sounds great, but where am I going to a, find a girl like mm-hmm. this? You know, mm. Not everyone's on Copang Yang going to these workshops. <laughs> <laughs> um, but already there starts the journey. Mm. Because I seed. Yeah, because, yeah, because like I would go into relationships years ago, I wouldn't really care about any of this. Didn't really ask any questions about hobbies or interests mm. or levels of consciousness and awareness it was just attraction mm. and oh we've got this energy this sexual energy and then yeah you have a great night mm. and then you don't really like and it just fizzles out mm. as i've got a little bit older mm-hmm. uh, and a little bit more aware it's like no the, for me like it starts with the conversation mm-hmm. it starts straight away what are you into what do you like you know what mm-hmm. so if there is anybody listening at home what you've just said is gold mm-hmm. because learn it read about it listen mm-hmm. to amazing podcasts mm-hmm. and make sure you subscribe mm-hmm. um but also, like, next time you go and meet somebody, maybe slow down. Mm-hmm. Like, do, do you want to kind of go into that same pattern again and again and mm-hmm. feel the same after? Or do you want something deeper? Yeah. And can you bring this topic to the table? Mm-hmm. And if the guy runs a miles away, then he's probably not the right guy. Exactly. <laughs> or if the girl's like, oh, no, I just want to, you know, then maybe she's not the right. If you want something deeper, like, this could just start the whole conversation, right? You just really spark something in my mind. Yes, mm. exactly. And if conventional sex worked, and conventional sex is what we know, mm. and it's goal-oriented. And if it worked... Goal-oriented. So goal-oriented. Like ejaculate. Yeah, yeah, exactly, or yeah. orgasm-oriented. Orgasm, yeah. If conventional sex worked, we wouldn't be sitting here right now. Mm. There wouldn't be so much interest on how to have better sex, Yeah. how to have deeper orgasms and better intimacy, right? Mm. So the idea of mindful intimacy is to, like you said, slow down take the time. It's about the journey. It's not about the destination. I love that. Yeah. Mm. And you know that, right? Like every, everyone knows that, but it's a whole other thing to practice it. And (laughs) I don't know about women. It's a very hard thing for a man when he's got his pants down and he is erect to Mm -hmm. slow down Mm -hmm. and be mindful. So now I'm going to bring it all over to me. Yes, please do. From a man's point of view, There has been so many times where I've had amazing sex Mm -hmm. and ejaculated, but I've just felt so shit after. Mm. I've just felt so depleted. I felt like now I understand it. Like my life force has just gone. Mm. And it affects my mental health. Mm. Like ejaculating, um, spending, you know, time just doing these things. And I kind of realized, again, as I've kind of gone through this journey, I'm like, wow, like I don't really enjoy it as I thought I did when I was younger. Mm. When I was younger, I was like a a rabbit, you know, Mm -hmm. I loved it. Mm -hmm. Um, And then as I grew up, I was just like, this isn't, it's just empty. Mm. Do you get other men that kind of say this to you or is it, am I just weird? No, no, you're not weird, Mm -hmm. first of all. And it's amazing how aware you are. And to answer your question, yes, I have men who come to me who express this depletion, this emptiness, this lack of fulfillment mm. after ejaculating or after having an orgasm with ejaculation. Because a lot of men aren't taught that you can actually orgasm without ejaculation. And in Taoist practices and um, in tantric practices, you're supposed to recycle your energy. You're supposed to recycle, recycle, recycle. And, w- and whenever you ejaculate, for men, it's actually spinal fluid. That spinal comes. fluid. Yeah, it comes from the spine. Mm. So it comes from the, sp- the spine and it produces semen and sperm. And when you ejaculate, you're losing this really precious the minerals and the vitamins that your body produces, mm. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the way I think about it is like if you're, for me, ejaculating is to reproduce and have a, a baby. Like, so baby, so basically it's life force. Mm-hmm. That, no wonder why you're so depleted if you're just watching porn yeah. and ejaculating five times a day or three times a day. Mm-hmm. Your life force is just complete. That, and that is a lot of energy to create mm-hmm. a baby, right? Yeah. There's a great book which Antonio shared with me, um, The Multi-Orgasmic Man. And this is where I was yes, bring it Mantak to. Yes, Mantak Chia. Mantak Chia, mm-hmm. yeah. And that is that whole practice of keeping the energy in. Mm. Until I read that book, I didn't realize that men could have orgasms without ejaculating. Like that to me was such a brain flip. I'm like, how on earth does that work? But what you've just said is what I hope every man gets to listen to. And if you're the kind of guy thinking, what on earth are they on about? That's exactly how I felt. I was mm-hmm. like, how can you ejac- How can you orgasm, I should say, mm-hmm. without ejaculating? Yeah. It's more of an internal 
Oh yeah, sensation. it's a build up. It's a it's the internal orgasm, and it's it's quite a a very it's like a feminine orgasm. And the way I talk about feminine versus masculine orgasms, masculine orgasms not it doesn't have to do with males or females because women can feel masculine orgasms, which is the very explosive, quick. And it's like lighting a match. So you light up a match, the match goes out, you cannot relight the match anymore. And that's like a male ejaculation, mm. right? Whereas the feminine type, the more internal, the deeper orgasm is like boiling a pot of water. It takes a while to get to the boiling point, but once it's there, it stays warm for a very long time. So the multi-orgasmic part of man and, and woman is that you preserve that energy. You don't let it leak out. Mm. You can go for a while beyond the, what, 40 seconds? <laughs> yeah. I love that. <laughs> and it's a practice. It's just like, just like meditation, just like mindfulness mm. practices. It is a practice. You can't expect to wake up one day and be like, okay, I'm going to do this and I'm going to orgasm without ejaculating. Oh, I've tried so many times and I'm still, pra- I'm still learning. We're I'm still, always. It's like, it's hard. It's one of the hardest things. I've given up drugs. I've changed many areas of my life. I've moved around the world. But I think the sexual uh, mastery is mm-hmm. probably one of the most challenging and amazing, mm-hmm. one of the most beautiful as well. Because when you do get those moments, you're like, wow, this is this is so deep. Mm-hmm. But I think it's one of the most challenging for a man. Only in my experience, I should mm-hmm. say. Maybe men. No, it is. It is from what I've heard. Because we've just got so much conditioning in our brains from, like you said, pornography, from, um, you know, what's on social media nowadays. Or just, you know, I remember when I was a kid, I never had any chats with my dad about sex or anything. It was like, there's a, oh, I'm showing my age now. There's like an yeah. old VHS video. <laughs> he pointed at it and then like, off they all went out the house and I'm just watching it and mm. masturbating in a bedroom. And mm. So like, again, there's no blame to parents because I think it's a con- conditional thing of society. But they didn't know, right? Yeah, exactly. They just yeah. passed their patterns down. But for, for, for a man to master that sexual energy, and when I read all the books like uh, Think and Grow Rich, mm. all the books like um, about money and success or whatever it is, your purpose in life, you want to mm. achieve something, or even these athletes, like these... Uh, Um, boxers, anybody that wants to master their game or be successful or or win a a medal, whatever it is, Mm. they they all say master your sexual energy or transmute Mm. that sexual energy, which I feel like comes back to what Manjak Chia and you're talking about is just have that inside, like change that. Mm. It's like like inner alchemy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And the irony is that most of us have a long list of to-dos every day and we put sex last, or it's not even there, right? So we have kids, work, all these things, a laundry list of to-dos, and intimacy and sex isn't even there, or maybe it's last. And that's so backwards, because sexual energy is literally what creates life. Like, we are here, we are all here because of sexual energy, And yet, if we're not prioritizing that and mastering that, how can you expect the other areas of your life to feel aligned? Mm -hmm. How can you feel alive in your work, with your kids, as a parent, in your relationships, if you neglect your sexuality? Mm. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I was at a Vipassana, me and Antonio did a Vipassana a few weeks ago, seven Mm. days, I think it was, like meditating for 10 hours a day. It was beautiful. And I I never mentioned it to you neither, but one of the meditations, I was really struggling to to follow the practice. I was like on day three. Mm. I was like, right, I'm just going to do my own thing for Mm. a moment. I just needed to kind of like, because the monkey mind was all over the place. So I just sat there and I just did my own thing. And all I could feel, I just had this awareness of like life force, mm. sexual energy, whatever we want to kind of label it, just this intelligence. And I was like, wow, that channeled through me and gave birth to my daughter. Yeah. And I was like, wow, then that energy channeled through her and gave birth to my granddaughter. Mm. I was like, wow, and that energy channeled through my mum and dad. And I was like, wow, we're not really like as in control as we think we are. This life force mm. is orchestrating kind of this whole experience for us because yeah. you wouldn't be here, Antonio. None of us would be here if it yeah. wasn't for, again, sexual energy, life force energy. Yeah. It's the same. And I was like, and I just sat in that meditation for like 30 minutes feeling that life force without yeah. saying it was me or being Brett or labeling it, just with this fascination of, holy shit, that's what we truly are. Yeah. And it was incredible. It was like I had goosebumps for like 30 minutes just sitting there thinking, this is insane. And it's kind of, you've got a responsibility for it as well, right? But it's mm-hmm. kind of powerful is what I'm trying to say. Exactly. It is so powerful that 
when you really take the time to cultivate it, and it's really about taking the time mm -hmm. and slowing down, you realize that your life can be so much more in flow and in balance. You're mm -hmm. not burnt out. You know, you make better decisions because you can be more clear about what you want. You feel like you're in a better mood because you are in a better mood because of the dopamine and the endorphins and the oxytocin, the love hormones are all like in your brain. So the chemicals in your brain and in your body are working for you. Rather than against you. Rather than yeah. against you. Yet people are putting it on the last thing on their to-do list. Yeah, that's crazy. And just going back to that, like mm -hmm. I never ejaculated, obviously, while I was in Vipassana. I just sat there for 30 minutes. Mm. That was better than having sex. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean that lightly. I generally mean that that was incredible. And that is what I would love to experience with another human being. Mm -hmm. Like you're both in the bedroom going to that height. To me, that's what Tantra is, raising your consciousness to the highest level so you become one. Yes. And I was just like, wow, I, here I am on my own feeling that. Yeah. How amazing is that? And maybe it doesn't even need to be in an intimate relationship. It could just be with your friends. Mm -hmm. like, if, like if you say, if you've got this buzzing going and you're making videos or you're doing podcasts and we can mm -hmm. feel it now, mm -hmm. and then again, it comes back to me, like, well, when I do the ejaculation, that disappears almost instantly. Yeah. Like it then, it's like there's a lack of dopamine or I've over... I've overused, overdosed on the dopamine. Yeah, yeah. Well, when did you... So you said you discovered it after discovering that book by Montag Chia. Uh, the multi the, the, Yeah. Um, I mean, I've been, I've been learning about it for years. What triggered it for you? What triggered... like the wanting, to learn? wanting to learn. Because your question, remember, you was like, where can you find a man or someone yeah, to talk about? Like, but yeah. so what was the turning point for you? I think there's two things. I think first thing for me was actually... It's like anything. If I eat too much cake and I keep on doing it, I realize like I need to stop eating cake. Mm. Or if I keep taking drugs and I keep t and, and I start to feel depressed, mm. like I need to stop taking drugs. I mm. think life is very simple. Um, do things that make you feel good and stop doing the things that don't make you feel good, right? Yeah, if and, people stuck to that. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 so simple, but it's it's hard. It's, like, yeah. it's complex. Mm. Um, uh, what do they say? It's it's common sense, but it's not common practice. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I kind of found that with sex. I realized that I was having these amazing relationships for three months, six months. Then it became kind of like patterns and dramas and shadows. Mm -hmm. My stuff, mm -hmm. you know, and, and some of their stuff. And I was just like, I'm just bored of this. There's mm -hmm. got to be something deeper in relationships. And then I just kind of went on this journey of like really fulfilling myself. Mm -hmm. I kind of feel like a lot of people want to be in a relationship. This is just my experience to complete themselves. And I'm just like, no, I want to complete myself first. Mm. So I'm not trying to get anything from another person so I can really add value and add love to that person. Exactly. Yeah. So it was that, for that, that was first of all. And then I went to a, um, my first yoga teacher training actually in Koh Samui and it said a tantra workshop like uh, on our day off. Mm. I was like, brilliant. So I turned up, I was naked, I was ready to get my massages <laughs> and it was just a room full of men. <laughs> and I was like, uh, shit. Okay. Yeah, so I wasn't naked. Yeah. But uh, I was expecting there to be like a room, room full of goddesses and we were all going to have this big orgy. Mm. And it was just a men's circle just talking about how depleted they felt, how pressurized they felt. Mm. And I was like, wow, I just felt normal. Mm. Like for a moment, I felt like, oh, I'm not the only, I thought I was weird because I didn't want to have sex. And I ended mm. So that's kind of how it triggered it off. First of all, I wasn't happy with doing what I was doing, just repeating my patterns. And then, and then I just took action. I just followed the, um, the tantra pool. Mm. And actually, if I'm honest, I've been to, yeah, retreats, workshops. I've been to a number of tantra, tantra workshops and retreats. And I'm glad that I've had some really good teachers. Um, and we've not had any sexual experiences in any of them. And so mm -hmm. when I talk about Tantra, people straight away think, yeah. oh, it's this and it's that. And it's like, I've just really learned about me, yeah. about mindfulness, about intimacy. And then I met somebody and we practiced. Mm -hmm. But of all the workshops and the retreats, and I'm just saying that because there's some places you can go where it is a full-on orgy. Yeah. But I sometimes wonder whether we'd miss the point. I'm like, I want to kind of go a bit deeper, if I'm honest. Exactly. So, which is coming back to your workshop. I really enjoyed. There was like, again, 20, 30 people in that room. And there were some people that you could see were really new mm. to your material or to the, the, the industry. Mm. And I was like, it was so lovely and refreshing to hear the way that you spoke about it. I thought it was very professional. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because people can get a miss uh, information or, or misguided when you go, especially down this journey. Yeah. There's a lot of vulnerable people, right? Yes. So you've got to be mindful and uh, you are very a very good teacher, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, just Thank bring you. bring it back to that workshop. That's, a, that's actually the number one comment I get in my either group workshops or private workshops where people are naked in my private one-on-one -on -one workshops is you're so professional, yeah. you know, especially because it's a husband and wife. Yeah. 
And let's say we're doing a lingam massage workshop or a yoni massage workshop. They're, they're very much like, you are so professional because you have to make sure you create a safe space, the safe emotional space for everyone to share and be vulnerable. Like you said, some people might be coming in and might have had a lot of stuff happen to them. And also I have no clue what Tantra even means. And I never call myself a Tantra teacher, but I do facilitate neo-tantric practices. And Tantra actually neo, just... sounds like some kind of matrix. Neo, yeah. <laughs> neo New ma- age. Okay, not, okay. Not traditional, um, not super tr- traditional Indian um, or... Uh, actually, I do do Taoist tantric practices, but neo is just modern. Okay. And Tantra just means woven, to weave. And you're weaving the spiritual and the physical, or you're weaving the yin and the yang, the sun and the moon. So it's really just woven. Yeah. And that's when you mention, you know, people often think when you say Tantra, it's like that, this huge orgy. People have to stop having that condition because that's from whatever they've seen on Tantra Island, the Vice documentary on this island. Yeah, I've never seen it. Oh I my think, God. If I'm haven't... honest, I think I watched about 10 seconds of it and just turned it off. I was like, that is not my cup of tea. Yeah. And, and I hope people don't... Uh, I yes. know a lot of the people in that, but I just hope people don't think that this is what it's all about. Yes. to me, it's like, oh, I've never experienced any of that. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. Mm. I feel like it's always quite one-sided when we talk about Tantra and you, you watch something like Tantra Island. It's very overly sexualized. I think it's too sexualized and you don't see the other aspect of the vulnerability of the space holding for people, of the connection people are creating that doesn't have to do with sex yeah and that's the growth have you watched um is it dupe by gwyneth paltrow goop goop yes did you watch yes. her sex docu- love goop yeah did you watch the documentaries about that i thought that was so lovely because yeah. there were a lot of people there that were having some serious breakthroughs very very vulnerable and it wasn't just about sex it was mm. like wow they're actually growing and letting go of stuff that's been there for years and mm. That to me is why I'm passionate about bringing like-minded people on that are not just about the kind of that side, which is nothing wrong with that. If that's mm. what you want for an orgy, go for it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Literally text me, invite me. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to grow like the, dare I say that word, but spiritually and go to a higher level of consciousness, there's also this, mm. which is to me, I think is the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. But yeah, Gwyneth Paltrow, I feel like she smashed it. Very professional. Um, she did another one about kind of like different um, plant-based medicines and stuff mm. like that. So if anybody ever gets the opportunity, I would uh, definitely watch your TED Talk first. Yes. TEDx. And it's only seven minutes. Seven minutes. And in Goop, I think there's like seven series. Yes. So yeah. But yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah. Okay, so um, pff, I think we might need to bring you back for another couple of podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> I could go on forever. Yeah. But let's just say somebody's at home. Mm. Okay, they're following me or they're listening to some of our podcasts they want to change many different areas of their life now they've just listened to we're talking about sex and yonis and massaging they're like Mm. what on earth is this Mm. what would you say to somebody is at kind of the beginning of their journey have you got any tips for them or any books or any suggestions Mm. that you would say go off and start looking into now thanks so much for watching our videos and being part of the tribe we're really here to raise consciousness ignite your vibration and help you master this monkey mind and did you know that science has proved proven over and over again that one of the fastest ways to reprogram your mind is through positive affirmations and things like these Bodhi beads. They're a set of 108 mala beads that go round in a ring like this and you practice positive affirmations to reprogram your brain. Science has also proven in a 30 day study that if you say the same affirmation and use a set of beads then you can literally neurologically change the pathways in your brain. Now that means any of those limiting beliefs that you've got around money, around love, around health, you can change them if you repeat a certain affirmation that I am wealthy, I am loved, I am healthy. And that's why we've created a set of eight powerful meditations where you do one meditation every day with me personally for 30 days and you use your beads in your hand and each time you use the affirmation, you roll your thumb and your finger around on these beads. These meditations are videoed, or you can download the MP3s, put them on your phone, and literally go to bed at night time rolling your Bodhi beads. These Bodhi beads are handmade with love in Thailand by a local family. We ship them free to anywhere in the world, and plus we donate 10% of all of our profits to an elephant sanctuary here in Thailand. So click the link below, make sure you sign up right now, because we're actually gonna give you a 20% discount code. All you need to do when you go to the checkout is type in I love Bodhi and that will give you a 20% discount on your first purchase of Bodhi beads. 
Have an amazing day. Now you can get back to the video. See you soon. Well, listen to Brett's podcast. Watch yeah. your TEDx talk. Watch my TEDx talk. Um, and after you watch something or you read a book, actually practice some of the practices in there. Mm. Actually take some of the nuggets and practice whether it's five minutes of tantric breathing, whether it's a five to 10 minute breast massage, self breast massage, maybe it's a five minute yoni massage without an end goal, okay? Start with five to 10 minutes baby steps, because we often think like, okay, we'll get out the vibrator and it's like this thing. And then it's like this whole evening, right? But it's actually a little goes a long way and a little bit consistently. So if you think about brushing your teeth, right? This is a Simon Sinek analogy, brushing your teeth. If you brush your teeth once a week, you're still probably going to need to go to the dentist. Maybe once a month you need to go to the dentist, but if you brush it every day, then you don't have to go to the dentist, right? So it's the same thing with these mindful intimacy or neotantric practices is to get to know your body little by little. You don't have to jump all the way to, okay, yoni and linga massage today. <laughs> you can start small. Start small. Start small. I like that, yeah. Yeah. And, and just something we never really mentioned, just to kind of clarify, like, we go for massages. I'm sure you have lots of massages here mm -hmm. in Thailand. We're so yes. blessed because they're so amazing and cheap. But it's like, that's the part of the body that you don't massage, right? I just mm -hmm. thought about it then. Mm -hmm. And really, it's just another beautiful part of your body. Mm -hmm. But it's become so sexualized and there is a kind mm -hmm. of goal to it. It's like, there's nothing wrong with just having it massaged without an end goal. Exactly. Or the breasts, or the right? Breasts. We never yeah. get the breast massage, but it's so important to massage the breasts because of the breast tissues and the lymphatic system and breast cancer, like with cells in there, you want to actually check for lumps. So even just for your own health mm. in general, you should be massaging these areas. Um, and yeah, like I, I love that you brought it up with just why do we neglect these areas? Because we think, oh, it's going to be sexual and you just get to the end goal. Mm. You go really, really quickly and you, or you jerk off really quickly to get to the end goal. But it doesn't have to be that way. So it doesn't have to be a happy ending. It's just a happy. It's just happy. Can I have a happy, please? Yes. My next massage later. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What did your mum and dad think of you? Because you say you from like uh, Hong, Hong Kong. Kong. Um, and I don't really know the culture there. So I'm just curious to know. Yeah. Um, what did your mum and dad think of you when you said I'm a mindfulness intimacy coach in the bedroom? Very good question. Um, so Hong Kong, very traditional Chinese. I came from a, quite a conservative background, even though I grew up in Canada. They were front row in my TEDx talk. And mm -hmm. I talked about Yoni and I talked about the seven different types of orgasms. I talked about what I did, you know. But being very traditional Chinese, they don't ask ever. They don't ask. They don't talk about that side. They, they know about my corporate wellness workshops and they tell their friends about that. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, <she> does. <laughs> that's what she does. Yeah, that's what she does. But then they creep on my mindful intimacy Instagram. And they watch my stories and they'll comment and you know on Zen Beach, naked Zen, yeah. when I'm I'm nude on Zen Beach every day. And my mom would be like, stop taking pictures on Zen Beach, on, on the beach where you're not wearing clothes, you know, <laughs> just being conserved. So they know what I do, but they never really ask. Do you think that's their cultural? It's not like they're kind of interested, but it's also they're so conditioned, right? Our parents, not just your parents, yeah. in general, it's yeah. their culture. Yeah. It's interesting, huh? Yeah, yeah, but that's a really good question because, mm. yeah, they're, I mean, Chinese or East Asian, I mean, Thailand. Mm. Thailand is, it's a very conservative culture as well. Even even in the Western world, like, you know, like, I mean, it's obviously, like we said uh, now, like technology mm. and, and social media is making it easier for people to have a voice and have these conscious conversations, which I love, over mm. coconut as well. Mm. But it's kind of, sex is a taboo topic, right? Mm -hmm. it, which is so crazy because, yeah, you can look on social media and there's people like that are naked and selling their their, their OnlyFans accounts and stuff like that, yeah. men and women, you know? Yeah. Um, but when it comes to talking about something deep yeah. and intimate and like really like to improve the quality of your life, it's like, oh, that's weird. Don't talk about that. And I'm like, right. you're watching it on TV. You're signed up to the porn. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You can't talk about your... You have a premium porn account. Yeah, yeah, and you've got all of your bits <laughs> and you don't even look at them. I think one of my amazing and most vulnerable experiences, when I had a tantra coach... Um, 
she, I won't mention her name just in case, but she's a beautiful teacher. Uh, she used to be on the island. She, we had like a, a, a block of, uh, of sessions. Um, and one of the techniques or the exercises she got to do me was to stand front, stand in front of the mirror naked, mm. had the music on, we had the uh, incense sticks. And I was just like, she said, I just take your clothes off very mindfully, very slowly. And I just want you to look, it was a huge mirror. I just want you to look at your body. Mm. And like normally, yeah, okay, you can walk around naked. But she was sitting there chanting and praying and like sending me kind of goddess love. And I was just like, this is so out of my comfort zone. She had a boyfriend. I had a partner at the time. There was, it was nothing like that. It was, I generally wanted to grow and, and, and shed layers of vulnerability and yeah. uh, go deeper myself. And I felt so exposed. Mm. And I was like, wow, this is probably the first time I've really been naked with somebody without like, you know, we're not having sex or we're rushing around or like you say, falling over, farting, mm. feeling embarrassed. Yeah. It was generally, I just stood there and that was like a meditation for like 15, 20 minutes. I just stood there looking at my body, completely naked. Mm. She was there, she was naked, she was praying and just sending me love. Mm. It was so beautiful after. Wow. I had to go through the journey of feeling awkward, but it was so lovely. Wow. And it makes me think how many of us guys actually really get to do that you know and I've come from such a masculine geezer background exactly. it, it's so beautiful now to come over to the other side and go oh wow mm. like that was not me like this is who I am yeah yeah what an amazing experience yeah. because just experiencing that in a non-sexual way where you have someone holding space who is nude mm. but also holding a safe space for you while you just process not in a rush, but the 10 to 15 minutes, I'm sure it felt like 10 hours. And that monkey mind was all over the place. Size of my penis. Mm -hmm. What does she think? What about mm -hmm. this? Mm -hmm. Many different uh, memories that come up. And I was just yeah. Like, what? Yeah. It is literally like a meditation. Yeah. You sit and you see the madness arise when you're in that moment. And those thoughts, what you just said, they also come up during sex, mm. during intimacy, right? We always think about like memories, past mm. partners. Do I look okay? Oh no, how's this angle? And everything that has nothing to do with this moment. A hundred percent. And this is why I love that because after that, now, you know, I'm so free. Mm. Like none of that really comes up. And it's like meditation. Like mm. when people come to me to learn meditation, they sit down and like, I can't really meditate because I can't stop thinking. And I've got all these things coming up. I'm like, but you was doing that anyway yeah like it didn't just happen today because you're meditating it's like now you're sitting you're simply seeing what's already there exactly and i think that's the same with like what you just said when you do these exercises you start to see oh my god this is how i've been in the bedroom without even being aware of it mm -hmm. i was unconscious that i was a bit embarrassed or i was trying to get to the end mm -hmm. i wanted to please you or mm -hmm. you know i didn't stop and ask for permission all these many different things when i started to do these crazy weird exercises which I thought at the time I was like shit she's getting me to join her cult this is crazy <laughs> <laughs> now after my my confidence uh, the embarrassment all of these manly things that I went through seem to have just completely disappeared yeah. and it's so beautiful because then you can hold more space yes. for another human being which is in front of you yeah yeah and uh, I want to touch on because that's related to my lingam massage and prostate massage workshops where the man feels so vulnerable mm. because the wife or the partner is massaging their prostate, which is the most direct way is through the rectum. So you're basically telling me, just to bring that down into Bretism, yes. finger up the bum. Finger up the bum. Massaging the man's bum. Correct. Wife is there, your yes. other side, kind of guiding her through it. Correct. Okay, that's the end of the podcast. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> See you later. And see. And action. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, I'm just, I, was, I was just kind of being vulnerable, standing naked in the mirror. Yeah. Taking me to the next level. Well, yeah, the next level of vulnerability okay. is Oof. finger up the bum. Okay. But uh, on a serious note, why is but, it so... But, no pun intended. Yeah. On a <laughs> why is it so healing and important? Yeah. So prostate cancer is the number one rising cancer amongst men, wow. especially in the US. I'm not sure in other parts of the world, but mainly due to stress and environmental factors and lifestyle. How does it affect the prostate when we're stressed? Just curious. Just lots of um, different emotions, anger, depression, and causes inf inflammation in the body. Mm. And, and it goes down to that. Exactly. And Interesting. Yeah. And a lot of us unknowingly squeeze the pelvis and the pelvic floor when we're tense, when we're not relaxed, when we're stressed, when we're not, we're, st we're stagnant, we're not moving the energy, the sexual energy, yeah. right? Um, and so in my lingam massages, the reason why it's not just a spiritual hand job is that it requires so much vulnerability and so much trust. So by massaging the prostate, it's not only just therapeutic, 
you can also unlock some of the tension. And once you unlock and unblock the tension, the energy, the prana can then come to a certain point where you can feel pleasure. So you need to release the tension in order to feel pleasure. Same thing with yonis. There might be tension in the yoni. You spend time unlocking some of the tension inside the yoni so then you can feel more pleasure. So the prostate can actually amplify pleasure, stimulating the prostate and the lingam at the same time. But it takes time. It's not about getting to the end goal. And again, this is more of like a, I don't want to use the word therapy, this is more of like a beautiful session for each other rather than, yeah, anal sex. Exactly. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, this is beautiful. We're healing, we're transforming, we're evolving and growing together. Yeah. I guess that's really kind of like summing up our podcasts and conversations. It's like, it really depends on what you want. If you want to go out and do all the other stuff, go for it. Like, yeah. But if you want something deeper, if you want to really evolve and grow, mm-hmm. do things like these, I guess. Mm-hmm. I-, I might wait for a moment before I start putting fingers up my butt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. I've already done it. You don't yeah. know. Maybe this is a sign. <laughs> Come on then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll lose all our followers. Brett's getting his bum. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or more followers. But, but, hell yeah, you never know, right? <laughs> but, but, I keep saying the word but. <laughs> <laughs> I find it so fascinating. Mm. Yeah, I find it so fascinating because it's healing. Yeah, yeah. And people mm. don't realize that yeah. until they experience it. Yeah. Viv, thank you so much. I'm so grateful. Again, I think we could bring you on the podcast again and have so many more conversations about this stuff. Um, and I like to keep it light-hearted, but it is a really beautiful topic. Mm-hmm. It's, a, I think, like... It, I don't want to use the word serious, but it is a is a, if you have been through any abuse or trauma or you're lonely or you're confused at home listening to this, and you know you're you're wanting something different mm. in life and you want to grow, then I think this is in this area and you're definitely the person they should come and speak to or listen to your TEDx talk. So we'll put a link to all of your details underneath in the in the um, YouTube stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is your website or Instagram if people just want to quickly follow you now? Yes, it is. So Instagram is Mindful Intimacy and website is mindfulintimacy.co. Okay, we'll put it all below anyway, just in case. Thank you so much. Is there one thing or one principle that you've learned mm. over the years from a teacher or from a parent? Just something that is really, because you asked me the question, like what kind of made you change? Mm. Is there one thing that made you change? One principle that's kind of like just got you on this path and you're so glad that that came into you or one teacher that like suggested something? Mm. Don't wait for a partner to suggest doing a workshop or discovering something together. Make that move yourself. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I made that mistake waiting for a partner to initiate. And I wonder actually, like a lot of the work I've done with this stuff has always been on my own. Mm -hmm. I've had a couple of lovely relationships with people and we've gone and seen tantra coaches, but most of the work has been more professionally with somebody and more by myself. Amazing. So yeah, I think you're so, I think we're so blessed on Copang Yang because like, you know, I don't even know what the day is today, Tuesday or Wednesday, yeah. I'm guaranteed there's probably some tantra <laughs> workshop going on. Yeah, every day. Yeah, so if you're, uh, if you're struggling, maybe you need to come to Copang Yang or, or, or reach out to Viv mm-hmm. and, and look for some places in your local area, right? Like workshops or people that they can connect to or read multi-orgasmic man for men and I think they've got a multi-orgasmic woman's book yeah women and couples oh nice Mm -hmm. amazing Mm -hmm. Viv you've got such a lovely energy you're so professional if anybody does come to Copang Yang I would highly recommend your workshop Mm. yeah I learned a lot had to draw a picture of a the, the women's and the men's anatomy and I yeah. realised I didn't really know a lot about the women's and the men's anatomy. I, You're not alone. Nah. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah, good work. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have an amazing day. And guys, if you enjoyed this conversation, um, yeah, let us know if you have any questions for Viv. Comment below. Uh, make sure you subscribe and yeah, tell us what you would like to see or other topics that you would like to hear and learn more about. Have an amazing day, guys, and I will see you soon. Thanks, Viv. Namaste. Namaste. Hello viewers, thank you so much for watching this video. I'm hoping that you enjoyed it just as much as we enjoyed making it. We love this adventure we're on, we love growing this community, and we would love you to actually help us. So I've got a favor to ask you. Make sure that you subscribe below, and if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and turn that notification button on, because that actually helps us with the algorithm. In other words, it's gonna help us reach more people and spread this ripple effect. And I really appreciate your time and energy for watching any video. So if you've got any comments or questions or queries, make sure you pop them in the box below. By subscribing, you are going to be one of the first people to know when we release new content. 
If you really wanna take your journey and your growth to the next level, make sure you watch this next video and have an amazing day. Once again, thank you so much for your time and your energy. See you in the next video.